Hi guys, I'm Patty. And Esme. And my name is Monica. Uh, we're here kind of representing Miami Life Center, practicing under Sharat. And we thought we'd make this video to kind of let you guys know about our experience here. I know a lot of people have questions about what it's like to come here, what it takes to come here. So hopefully we'll answer some of those questions. So first I wanted to go, by, go through um, and talk a little bit about why we decided to come here in the first place. So my first time was two years ago, and I came really just because I was told I should come. Like I don't, I don't even think I had like my own personal like burning desire to come. It was kind of just I was doing the apprenticeship at Miami Life Center, and all the teachers were like, "You got to go to Mysore," and I, I and I think there was just something in me that was like quietly telling me that I needed to go because there was nothing that stopped me from being like, oh no, no, I can't go. So I was just like, okay, yeah, you're right. That really resonates with something really deep in me that I need to go, so I'm gonna go. And once I made the decision to come, I think that was the hardest part, making the decision. Once I was like, yes, I'm gonna go to Mysore, then everything else seemed to fall into place. So for me, the hardest part, and I know this isn't the case with everybody, but for me, the hardest part of coming to Mysore my first time was actually making the decision in my mind to come. Once I was like resolute in coming, then everything kind of like naturally progressed into me being in Mysore, and I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? And my first experience was amazing. I really, really loved it, um, but I'll stop there. So why did you guys come to my decide to come to Mysore the first time? Okay, so for me, uh, I had a loud voice. It was quite the opposite. I was decided, I knew I, I wanted to come. And the year that I wanted to come, it was 2014. I had to have a surgery, a fibroid removed on my uterus. So I left it for 2015. And uh, 2015, and I, I never had anything that was thinking that would stop me from coming. But I thought that you had to like be fully prepared for this, like you needed to do know an entire full primary series, you needed to be like super advanced, and that was the perhaps the only thing that stopped me from coming in 2013 when I actually wanted to come. That was the first year, so I waited about two years to be sort of ready to come. Um, and then other than that, I don't know. But then everything happened so smoothly. Once you, so once you felt ready, is when you came. Uh, it wasn't like re I was ready in my mind, mm -hmm. but once I was accepted, it just all went through smoothly. The first time, the first and second time was pretty smooth. Okay, so it was mentally preparing for it. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Because one of the questions, and I'll just like go off to the side for a second here. A lot of the questions that we get is that you need to be physically prepared to come here. So what would you say to someone who's like, oh, I'm not physically ready to okay. to practice the Shadow? I can pick on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't have to feel, wait for the moment in which you're gonna be perfectly fit, physically fit, mm -hmm. like your practice is amazing, it's never gonna happen. It wasn't for me for the first time. I'm sure I was the one who gave me the poses for the second series and worked with me for, for drawbacks. And on the second trip, I was having sort of like a bother, some uh, thing going on on my knee right a month right before I, I went and I even hesitated and I said, oh man, should I go? Maybe I shouldn't go. And the teacher at the time said that has nothing to do, that he have seen senior advanced practitioners modifying and doing short practices. Of course, they've been to my store before and sure I had to know them, but it was not a, it shouldn't be a factor since I had already been. And I went and I had a great time. My knee situation went away thanks to the so-called Meister magic. Yeah, Meister magic, it's Meister real. Magic. I think if you know your sequency, Mm -hmm. You have to memorize right. the sequence until the pose mm -hmm. that are you working that it's good. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Come here. That's true. You just have to yeah. know your sequence, yeah, the so sequence up actually. to the posture that you're practicing, yeah. and that could be my chance and a B. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But you have to know your sequence because sure, it's not gonna. Yeah. And you can't like I think that's one an important thing is to not wait until you think that your asana is perfect. Oh no. To then come to my sword. Yeah. You know, and I and I hear that a lot, especially at Miami Life Center. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm like, what are you talking about? You practice six times a week yeah. under an authorized teacher. Like, you're definitely ready. Yes. The yeah. asana is never gonna be, at least for me, is never gonna be perfect mm -hmm. in my mind. I thought I needed to be perfect for Utita Hasta of Angustasana. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not gonna I'm wait. I'm not gonna wait. I'm still working on that three posture. years for that <laughs> yeah, pose. Exactly. Then I'll never be a miser. <laughs> okay, so Esme, why? Well, why? What made you decide to come to Mysore the first time? My case, 
was very different to mm -hmm. your case because I was living in Argentina and it was like I start practicing Ashtanga and the first thing that was my my I don't know my craziness was the jump back mm -hmm. and I asked to my friend no to my teacher if one day it's going to be possible for me to do it yeah. and he told me yes if Kino McGregor can do it with this <laughs> leg you can do it and I was like okay who is Kino McGregor and the first video of Kino that I saw was about Mysore. Oh my oh god! Nice. Out of all the videos that Kino oh, has yeah. on YouTube. Why? So those two dolls were really inspiring. Yeah? Yeah. And was like, when I saw the colors of the powders, the cocoon mm -hmm. powders and the city and she explained everything, I was like, what? I need to go wow. there right now. Cool. And I asked my teacher and she explained me everything and because of that it was was that I did my first trip in mm -hmm. I am not sure if it was 2013 or 2014 okay <laughs> so your first trip was a while ago yes nice that yeah. happened to me too mm -hmm. I didn't have any teacher telling me to go to Mysore but I remember I saw Kino's video yeah. and I was like whoa like a Mysore magic yeah. video and everything like yeah. you wanted to Mysore there. magic it's cool yeah. it's cool to notice though how like we get seeds in different places that yes. like end up blossoming into this trip to Mysore. Like your seed was a video. Your seed was jumping back and jumping through, and that became <laughs> no, you becoming so attracted to the culture. Yes. yes. Yeah. It was the first video. Yes. It was the first video that I saw of her. Cool. And was like, oh my god, I have to go there. What is that powder? What is yeah. that color? Yeah. And it's like the culture and like yeah. and like how amazing the city is and how much you can discover. Yes. Cool. <laughs> In terms of my story, I want to kind of start from the beginning with applying because a lot of people have questions about applying. Mm. So like, where does that process even start? Okay. So first, you need to know when he's teaching, which these days it's kind of um, we kind of have to be on our toes and waiting for him to announce when he's going to teach. It used to be a little bit more predictable, right? But yeah. now it's kind of in the summer or it's three months in the winter. It used to be longer times in mm. the winter. This season was only three months, January, February, March. So he'll announce it on his website, shiratjoyce.com, when he's going to practice. I mean, when he's going to teach. It's three months before, before. you come mm. that you need to apply. And like that is very specific, like three months to the, to the second. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to start January 1st, Three months before January 1st is October 31st. Mm -hmm. So October 31st at midnight Indian time. So then you need to accommodate for like wherever you are, whatever time zone you're in. That's when you need to be on your computer, refreshing the homepage for shiratjoyce.com where a registration link will come up. You click it, you fill it out as fast as you can and you submit. And as soon as they reach the maximum number of submissions, they will not take your application. And that happens in like five minutes. Yeah. Like um, 12.05 Indian time, it's closed. I might be exaggerating a little bit. We're like twelve oh seven. Twelve oh seven. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you need for the application? So, f for the well, f be ready for that. Uh, you need first thing they will ask you is a passport picture, and there's a specific measurement, the GP whatever it's called, the Monica transfer for me, like the ones that you JPEG. transfer. JPEG, whatever that is. <laughs> so, picture me trying to do that and not having that ready. That meant that I didn't come here for nearly three years because if you don't have that ready by the time that you finally figure it out the applications are, are, are um, already received have already been received you missed your chance the season is closed that's it wait another year <laughs> wait, wait for the whole year. season <laughs> so uh, you can check once the, the application is open or I don't know if you can mm -hmm. do that now beforehand that it asks for a specific measurement passport picture a regular uh, picture of yourself like a front face picture then of course your name last name address who are the teachers that you practice you must practice with an authorized teacher for at least a minimum of three months mm -hmm. I think it's three months yeah mm -hmm. and uh, the dates it will ask you for the dates that you practice with that teacher you have to give provide the name of the teacher town and city country uh, and what else am I missing? I think that's yeah. about it. The months you're practicing. And the months that you're practicing, which okay. now is a lot easier because it provides you the information. It will tell you either January, February, or February, March, or just one month. 
before you have to figure it out on your own and then you lose chance to lose time. like I did one time Precious too time. I put the wrong date and then it wouldn't take it so but now things are a little easier yeah it's very stressful though you have to be super fast you could also have if you have like a friend who's not applying for my store you can get them also on a computer and you both fill it out at the same time and whoever's faster because it clicks submit first and if that application doesn't go through which is very possible that it doesn't go through then your friend clicks submit mm -hmm. that's just like but don't a do super it at the intense same time. trick oh yeah you, you can't submit Monica. it twice or you <laughs> is the faster girl you have to be super fast don't do but it at the same time otherwise your application then also will get cancelled so you have to wait until you get that information, oh, it didn't go through or whatever that is, then your friend immediately submits it. Right, so you can submit twice. Okay, so you applied, hopefully you're in. What are, like, really briefly, what are some, like, things that you need to have prepared in order to come to my store? Like, practical things. Mm, the visa. The visa. First visa. Data. As soon as you get that confirmation, get your visa ready. As soon as you get the visa ready, find your flight so it doesn't go up in price but sometimes it's tricky go with the flows follow your instinct and make so sure <laughs> and make sure that your flight you is within the time frame of your visa <laughs> do not overstay the vis visa is a mission and a half i don't care whether you have european or american passports it's not gonna work they're very strict here and then you have to come back to town stay trapped for like a week trying to resolve the situation and then that can give you problems in the future too right and she's speaking from experience if you haven't caught on already. listen to the voice of experience <laughs> I'm glad I'm here <laughs> okay all right um, vaccines like I think they're optional oh, yeah. I think as long if as you have your basic vaccines yeah. like cover you don't need even to. if you don't I think you're okay it depends on like how paranoid yeah. you are about that um, and yeah that's it okay so, sometimes it's tricky for us because if you do it then you you can get sick from them and then you're mm -hmm. coming here to practice and you're feeling all awkward and off and whatever I didn't do them, but I have already like the what's it called, the basic one, titis, titis, whatever. Yeah, I have titis or something. Yeah, a bunch of yeah. some things, but they have usually they have a uh, expiration of ten years. If you're okay, you don't need to do it. Yeah, or you can just go to your local like vaccine travel office. Yeah, we, they will tell you to exist. have like everything, and like, they'll go and they'll be like, you need all this, or you're gonna die, and you're like, okay, <laughs> I'll take that one and that one, you know, and yeah. you just pick the ones you want. That's what I did for my first trip, because my mom was like super paranoid, so I was like, <laughs> just to like relax this woman, <laughs> I did it, but this time I was, I didn't do it, because I didn't feel like I needed to. Um, okay, so once you're here, what are some important practical things that you think people need to know? Well, before you get here, you have to get your your house arrangement situation. Oh, we forgot that, yes. And your car but ride from not, the airport. But you can do it today. here. You can you do could. it here, but it's a bit of a hassle because you usually, depending on what at what time you're arriving. So let's say you're arriving like past like a six o'clock in the morning or whatever. Everybody's sleeping, and you're in the middle of the street with the <laughs> luggage. Just like, where am I going now? And you can also go get a hotel. You don't have to be stuck on the street. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if it's your first time, but if it is your first time and you're in Mysore, you got a hotel. there's no little hotel. Yeah, you go. Here. So there's a Facebook group, Ashtanga Community right. in Mysore, right? That's the place to go. Um, and like there'll be like regular postings there for for places to stay. So you can book a place through that, that through that Facebook group. Um, yeah. In my case, my first time that I was here, I arrived to a hotel and then I went to Chivas to okay. find a too. house. Uh, yeah. He brought me to like 10 different houses and yeah. then I found that, that good one and was Super oh, good experience. Shiva is meant way. to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shiva, she exchanges your money, gets you a scooter, right. finds you places if you need to. Right. So those are things that you do when you get here. You want, if you want to rent a scooter, you can go to Shiva. I'm sure there's other scooter rentals, but I don't yeah. know about that. And them. he leaves a few houses um, by the chala. Yeah. It actually says Shiva has, but you can ask Shiva anybody. Has. Yeah. Um, you can get a SIM card for your phone, but your phone needs to be unlocked. Oh yeah, people. You need to yeah. Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. So every every like apartment has Wi-Fi, yes. or a lot of cafes have Wi-Fi too. Um, and I, I mean, it's good enough to like browse the internet and like answer emails. I've been working the whole time I've been here, and it's been fine. It's a little bit slow when I have to like download and upload content, like videos mm. and stuff. But for like regular day-to-day -day things like email and internet browsing, then it's totally fine. Um, 
And people have asked, is it possible to do work while you're there? And it's totally possible. I mean, you have so much downtime. So let's get into a little bit, like, what, what does your day-to-day -day life here, look like here? Like, what do you do from when you wake up to when you I go to sleep? I wake up, mm -hmm. I prepare my coffee, mm -hmm. I go to practice. After practice, I go, I go breakfast, uh, I go to chanting, and then mm -hmm. uh, philosophy class with mm -hmm. chanting. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's like lunch, and I prepare myself to sleep mm -hmm. and relax, to read, yeah. and it's, it's only that. Yeah, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's really nice. I love the contrast of really deep, intense practice with against like the like a really simple daily life. Mm -hmm. Like our lives are so simple here. You know, like we don't have AC. Like we may or may not have a washing machine. Like our our food is well, Indian food isn't very simple. Um, but like we we scooter around or we walk around. Yeah. Like we don't have a lot of like things to do. We practice. We find our way to some coffee and some food. We may or may not take some extra classes in mm -hmm. philosophy. And other than that, we're kind of just like Drink hanging coconut. out, drinking coconuts. <laughs> and like our lives are so simple here. And the, cool, the greatest thing is that everybody else is kind of living in a similar life. Yeah. So we're kind of on the same page yeah. and supporting each other in that lifestyle. And I think it's the only way that we would be able to have such an intense practice is if we have this kind of lifestyle. Yeah. You yeah, know, when I'm we go back home, our lives get so complicated. Yes, and, and because it, all that you do, even though the food that you eat, it's because you practice, because you want to mm -hmm. be good right. for your practice. Yeah. So you eat dinner super early that so that you're digested by the time you practice. Exactly, everything revolves, revolves around, around the practice. The practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is like such a luxury and such a privilege mm -hmm. to have this opportunity. Yeah. Because, I mean, most people don't have that. You know, they have to find a way to squeeze their practice in in the, mid in the middle of uh, a super busy work day. Mm -hmm. Which is this, it's kind of so, it's so nice to be able to, like, give yourself this time to just focus on the practice. So that we have that foundation and that, like, inspiration to take back with us when we are, like, surrounded by all those busy things in our life. Yeah. And trying to get it in between work and in between all of the other things we need to do. Yeah. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. So well, use awesome. makeup for one month. Yeah. Use She's going every natural day. with her hair. <laughs> every day, uh, oil. Only. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. good. Yeah. So, so that, that's a good point of what you said because mm -hmm. ideally that's what Sharad's been saying not to overbook yourself with all extracurricular activities and things like mm -hmm. that. Not to forget the purpose that you came to reserve your energy to you do your practice. So that you're not the next day tired or sore or tender because you went to do some sort of massage or whatever it is. But at the same time, if you're worried, can I work while I'm there? You also, it's possible. I've seen people and you can still have that relaxation, do work. Mm -hmm. I've seen people having breakfast. It's so relaxing. The places where we have breakfast, everybody's there. I've seen people on the computers, they socialize, they talk, they do their work. And sometime in the afternoon and still be able to participate into the miser yeah. life and do some work That's simultaneously. Money, yeah, I've managed I've been working like I've been working my same amount that I work at home and I've been fine. I've still had a lot of downtime mm. and a lot of time to relax. Right. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um but that being said, like it's so special to be able to give yourself this month. Yeah. So but it, I like knowing that it's it's a lot of work it's it's really difficult to be able to like take that time off from work so this is just part of the planning process you know planning to how are you going to get a month off from work like how are you going to get all of your your home life responsibilities in order so that you can leave for a month and this is really hard i mean maybe you have kids so that's another question that a lot of people have asked can you bring kids and the answer is absolutely yes so many people bring kids yeah and it's really beautiful to see because shara actually loves to see yeah. the kids in the shala so he even gives parents a, a parents priority pass which basically it's you can come practice at any time so everybody else he 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 schedules you a time to practice mm -hmm. So it will either be from 4 to, I mean, this month it's been until like, I don't know, 10 a.m. Yeah, I think so. And then you come at that time. Well, really you come an hour before the time that they give you, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> and then you wait in line and you wait in a little group of people until he calls you one more and you go into the spot. But 
everybody gets a time schedule just except parents. Parents get a, a parent priority, which means they can come whenever they want to and they skip the entire line and they go straight into the shala to practice. You know, we're not off in the caves by ourselves practicing yoga. We're like in the world, mm -hmm. we're having families and he really wants to support that. So he's super supportive of parents and kids. He even, so now we started practicing in the new shala. In the new shala. And there's a second floor, there's an area designated for parents so they can bring their kids. So while they're practicing, the kids can be there and they can watch them. Because sometimes parents have, when we used to have super early practice in the old shala, and then the parents had to figure out either to find the nanny or leave it with a relative that they brought with or leave it with a friend or whatever that was. So now there's a second floor where the parents can be there with the kids and the kids are like running around, the parents are practicing. practicing. Yeah, but they yeah. can still look down where we're practicing without kids. Yeah, yeah, so totally and possible all to come time. with kids. For sure. And the, 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 the beauty of it also, I think what helps for people who come here and do work or with kids is the simplicity of life again, which mm -hmm. is the one luxury that we don't get to have back at home, like mm -hmm. Monica was saying. So many responsibility, uh, running around and all these things. Here is everything is easy from like washing your clothes, your landlord might provide somebody that can wash them for you or you know anything just you work with cash, you don't have to be going to the bank, you don't have to be doing stuff, whatever it is, it's always usually very easy and simple yeah. Yeah. to work around. Um, I went to the chocolate man one time, I went to, to buy some stuff for breakfast, and I realized I didn't have the money. He was like, okay, okay, bring me tomorrow. <laughs> that doesn't fly in the States. I had to get back in the car, drive back home, <laughs> go get the money, come back, go to the supermarket, while well, things were probably already put back, yeah. like, you know, so it's very simple. Yeah, I love it. Uh, you can meet with too many people from different places mm. and it's so nice, everybody is so kind, so happy to be here, so friendly. I have a new friend, yes, but also I have friends that I meet before. In, in my, my Yes, in my twice, yeah, I don't previous know in my in my previous trip, yeah. so it's wonderful. Yes. Yes. And what's your favorite dosa place? Yes. It's complicated. <laughs> no, 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 many. no, no, no. I have it. SPR. Yes, SPR. Really? The, the ghee dosa is so good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. nice ghee dosa. Oh, ghee dosa. I gotta try that. <laughs> There's a lot of, I feel like that's a lot of what we do here. It's just like, what was the latest restaurant you went to that I need to try? Yeah, and exactly. It's like all true. Indian and like, sometimes it's experimental. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> sometimes it gives me it's diarrhea. Easy because no. I eat uh, hot. But for you okay. guys, it's yeah. Yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Difficult. So, like, there, when, when they ask you if you want spicy, you, even if you want spicy, you say no spicy because it's going to be spicy. Regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they manage to make everything spicy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's just because we're not used to it. But our Mexican is. Yes. Okay. Thank so, you. some other things about our daily life some new things. Well, we love also when we come here. If uh, you've been here before, you see the same faces the coconut man. The chocolate yes. man, the rickshaw drivers, they sort of recognize you. And I mean, it's a little town, it's very quaint, it's, it's, we're safe here. The Ashtanga community is a mm -hmm. tight network, you trust it. Somebody tells you, go in in this place, we have all been trying, it's secure. And we take care of each other's back in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it's a very secure network mm -hmm. for us and we feel safe. But then there are also new places and that is fun also. Uh, for me, this trip is the pizza and coffee place all at once. Mm. And uh, as part of Depth and Green, it's a nice place. And when you come, you'll see it. And I love Push Beer and Gia there. They treat you like, you know, like you're part of their family. They know you forever. <laughs> and I love exactly just like Esmeralda. You get to meet people from all different countries. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for me to be a little bit more outgoing since I'm usually like on my own, very, um, a bit of a lone wolf so you get to talk and 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 socialize a little bit with other people and it's really cool and people that are within the same train of thoughts that you are for the most part and uh, the same mm -hmm. flow of energy right. and 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 then the other new thing is the new shala that's that was new for us and we're so happy to have experienced that because so in the 
old shala, the main shala, let's call it the main shala. Uh, we still hold the Meister classes there, but for guided classes, we we have to go outside Gokulan. And it's about, what, 50 minutes drive, brake shower or scooter for the guided classes. And now we get to practice all of us there at once. Before we used to like, get up one o'clock in the morning, if your practice time was at 4.30, mm -hmm. to be there by like 2.15, the gate will open at 3 yeah. 30. if you're not there Very at that stressful. time they most most likely you practice by the bathroom so now we all get to go in and practice at the same time so that's new and we don't have to wait in line for two hours and we don't have to we just great. arrive set up our mats and my so favorite we're thing is that you can go on your scooter you can ride your scooter yeah. yes to that yeah. place and it's wonderful it's, it's really like nice. as the sun is and rising everybody yeah. moves around with scooter and motorcycles and if you don't drive it like me you have your tons of friends from all around the world that give you rides everywhere and you're still enjoying it and it's so much fun so and i and i wanted to add something to all of this is i think one of the biggest things that stops people from coming is just like being because like the fear of like not knowing india seems so mysterious and it's just like will i be safe like will safe i know what to do and like i think you can rest assured that you will be taken care of you will be safe there's a community like we've yeah. mentioned even that will locals. take care of you if you're ever lost there's even the locals are so friendly yeah remember my first trip i was like so overwhelmed with the idea of coming to india and then when i got here i was like what the hell was i scared about like that was so this is so much like easier and um like more approachable than i thought it would be so if that's stopping you from coming don't let it you know all of those all of those unnecessary fears they will be they will disappear as soon as you get here and like anything else obviously you always have to be careful and be mindful of your surroundings a car passing by a cow might like poke you or whatever that that's always there and even sure says don't walk at night on your own walking groups but even the locals they like watch out for ourselves and sort of like this this town has flourished because all of us come here mm -hmm. and it has been sort of built for us all these little western or indian places for them and for us also so uh, it's very symbiotic relationship and i remember i remember when the first times when i was thinking i didn't have that much overwhelming thoughts about oh my gosh i'm gonna be in this place and i don't know what to do and whatever all i thought was well if this for senior teachers imagine back then 30 years ago if they came and they kept coming and they made it then i can do it too and now it's like nothing like 30 years that's ago. true i think so about much that easier too. like we it's have like it a little so bowl easy we have it so easy like so easy. we can I, i'm like constantly connected to wi-fi like to internet yeah here. i can like contact anybody at any time it's crazy yeah you know like yeah. we have it so easy before like making a call back home was like this whole process <laughs> yeah so we're good and like we have a facebook group <laughs> that changes exactly. everything that is super reliable <laughs> yeah. it's exactly like that that Thai network that i tell yeah. you we leave our all of our flip-flops there sometimes somebody put on the flip-flops <laughs> that they thought it was theirs <laughs> and they got out with your flip flops and you end up with like some large ones or small <laughs> ones. You send a message on that Facebook, oh, some, did somebody take my flip flops? Oh, yeah, no wonder. I noticed mine were too small or too big. Yeah. You meet that person, you exchange, it's just like that. That's that what reliable. you going to say? That uh, it's safe mm -hmm. to be here, but I think it's important to wear the proper clothes. Yes. Oh, yes, that's very important. Yeah, yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, you have to cover your shoulders and your legs. Yes. I think so. Yeah, you can just lay here, and and the chest. And the chest. <laughs> yeah. And that's all. Yeah, just be modest. Yes. And respect their culture. Um, okay, cool. So I think we can wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to wrap up by each of us just talking a little bit about what it, what it's like to practice in the shala and practice under Sharachi. Um, do you guys want to go first? You want me to go first? It's intense. It's very intense. It's very inspired. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I think everybody wants to know what is happening because you hear like one more, one more tall. No, you're not tall. He's <laughs> like on the edge of the seat. And then it's like you, you, you want to know what is happening because mm -hmm. it's un unusual as our shala, no? Mm -hmm. But then. It's like, I don't know, you start to practice and you can go so deep on your practice and 
and stop to hear all this one more one more and then re you realize yeah. that you are done your practice yeah mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful mm -hmm. it's wonderful you lost yourself on your on the rhythm of your breathing and it's so nice and something have this magic shala that if you are working on something there is the place to 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 get it because mm -hmm. I don't know it's magic yeah it's magic it's so beautiful. everybody is 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 practicing uh, with so much devotion and discipline and it's awesome <laughs> I agree it is awesome yeah cool I love it for me it's a uh, I uh, I found like Miami Life Center's energy is so great, not only because I'm there, but so many people travel from all around the world to practice our shala, and they always say that that place has such a special energy. Anything that can outmatch that is practicing here in Mysore, which are the energy there is unlike any other that you will experience there. And Shara's energy and presence is incredible. If you're coming here is because oh you're gonna get adjusted and all those things my first trip I wasn't even adjusted and I was like oh but I get adjusted in my life center like all the time and this and that it doesn't even compare you don't even need to mm -hmm. because the practice becomes so much your own mm -hmm. and like Esmeralda was saying you're so in your practice and it's not only by your practice, but by the energy that's being churning and created by all of your fellow practitioners. They're all there for that one single reason. And Shiraz's presence is so strong that it all combined mm -hmm. creates oof, like a Molotov, beautiful energy. You're just yeah. there and it's full on. It's mm -hmm. just so to be experienced. Both of you. Yeah. To be experienced. Yeah, I think, I think the only way I know how to describe it is being in the shala and practicing there is the most genuine experience in yeah. the practice I've ever had. Mm. You yes. know, even like on a really good day at MLC, yeah. like it's just, this is like, I feel like we're touching the heart of the practice here. Yep. You know, every single day we're touching it. Yes. And I think it has a lot to do with the way Sharachi holds the room. Yes. He's very simple and he's very straightforward. And I think that allows for us to go straight into the heart of the practice with letting all of these like other noises and opinions and ideas about the practice just like fall away and all you're left with is the practice and i think also in the room we have people from all over the world people of different cultures people who look different and that also kind of falls away and the only thing that's left is our devotion like you yeah. said is is our practice and like us each of us coming into our own practice so i think in a way it's it's like the the uni the underlying thread of the practice is brought out because everything else is so different like we look different we do postures a little bit differently but there's this thing that kind of comes out and it's the same you yeah. know and it's like it's the same. practice yeah. it's the heart of the practice yeah. and it's so beautiful it's so beautiful yeah i think that's it it's the best expression of tapas yes, yes. It's discipline, it's devotion, mm -hmm. it's all effort. the effort of all the practitioners. Effort. Yeah, you're just there, and they're mm -hmm. all there. We're all putting our heart yeah. on the mat. Every as single person to is our putting the Yeah, it's devotion to the practice, mm -hmm. to and the Shalaki lineage. And Shalaki is present for everyone of us. Yes, he it's really wonderful. is. He puts everything. There's no way you can't even cheat. He can be on the other side of the room. You can't. There's no way. Like you, like you can't even slack and look at the window. It doesn't happen. Yeah. It's just that power within you, it's as if it's just standing in front of you. You're yeah. Doing and it gets you. Thing. It gets you to like yeah. put the work in. But like that's the thing. You like really figure out what it takes to put the effort in. Yeah. And like you said, I feel like we're so absorbed in our practices and we go so deep, like you said, that it goes by in like a second. You're like, whoa. Yeah. And at home, I'm like, oh my God, I still have like 20 postures to go. And, and it's like so Yeah, hard. exactly. Like you, <laughs> you can know? think that at yeah. home or the mental blockages that you have. Oh no, today because this and that, whatever. That's happening. You're there and the energy is like, Phew. Yeah, it just like <laughs> lifts you and like takes you through your practice. Doing your thing. Yes, and yeah. you do the asana practice, but after that, 
I don't know what happened in practice that you can you can connect with yourself, with your herida, mm -hmm. bones, with your logins, with everything that you have and sometimes you only have like there. Yes. And when you are walking and back to your home, it's like oh yeah. You're I like didn't awake. realize that I have this login on myself. Oh, I didn't realize that I have this one. Yeah. Uh, right, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you become, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's like an awareness like happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you become raw. Uh, also, a lot of people usually ask, why do you keep coming? You already went one True. time. Yeah. My why do you have to go to again? <laughs> why to, uh, a lot of people ask. I haven't even left, I already want to come back. Yeah, I know, we're already planning our next trip. Precisely because mm -hmm. of this. Now I'll tell you what happens. So we're filling up our cup. It, we're, we're filling up the well. When we go back home, we are motivated, energized. We have touch base with the source. We're filled and we know, okay, what it is to get up to do your practice. And we carry this at home. Eventually, life will take over and you start losing that up. Especially householders, people with kids, family, whatever. You see them here coming back all the time. As that begins to run off, the season opens, we come back to the source, fill our cup from touch our the source. Touch and it. it's like literally feel, you're literally touching the source. And take that That's back home again like. to carry us yeah. through through our personal lives, mm -hmm. the daily lives that we have. Um, yeah. Each of us back at home. For sure. Cool. And can I just say it's been so awesome being here with you too. Uh, yeah, I know. It's nice to meet new people, but it's also yes, nice to that's have so people true. from home. That's yes. happened to me. That's so I, I, I meet new people, but it's like I feel so happy to have this like family yes. here. Yes. It's like a family. It's, it's so natural and yeah. Yeah. it's super good. It's so awesome. Yes. And we get and we to, get go to back see, home. You get to see outside practice. Is if you ask life lessons, we all face certain little life lessons. Oh, yeah. We all have our little vulnerabilities, we're exposed <laughs> to it, we analyze it, it's like, oh, okay, this is like this, like that. So yeah. you learn your little inner philosophy too as you go along. You learn a lot of lessons here, that's yeah. for sure. But you'll just have to come. Yes. We can't tell you that. You have to experience, you have to come and you have to experience them yourself. Otherwise, we'll spoil. Like, Shara, I think Shara kept saying that in conference today. Like, you just have to experience. Like, yeah. you can't, like, there's only so much you could read. You need to experience it for yourself. Yes. And I really hope. As a result of this video, more people do. If you guys have any questions, you can reach out to us. Reach out to us on um, on Instagram or email us info at MiamiLifeCenter.com if you have any more questions. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Yay! Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Namaste.